Hi everyone, I'm Gail. I'm the client relations manager and overall project manager of the company. I manage all projects that come in to the company, including all drafting deadlines. Um, I'll turn it over to Aya. Hi guys, I'm Aya Schlachter. I'm the founder of MGS Global Group. I actually have an architecture degree from NJIT and a master's from Columbia University in architecture and urban design. I started, you know, in the traditional practice for like five or six years before I pivoted to architecture support. So what we do now is really support architecture firms in DD to CD drafting. But um, I just want, want to welcome everyone for being here. I know you guys are busy with your drawing deadlines, so we'll make it worth your while. Um, we'll open the floor now to Q&A. Before we begin, I would like everyone to, it's a small group, so maybe introduce yourselves, where you're from, as well as um, what type of architecture do you do and what do you expect to get out of this session? Maybe we start with Keisha and then okay. we'll work backwards. Um, yes, and I just uh, forwarded the link and I can see um, my husband, Jesse, given Jess, um, he doesn't mind sharing his screen sometimes, but... Um, um, I'm working from home. There you are. And he's in the office. Uh, we have a 10 person firm. We do 100% healthcare architecture located in Orange County, California. And we are uh, on call architects for um, San Jose for facilities up north. We hire a lot of engineers too. And I'm curious about how we can manage their time when there are consultants and when they're yeah. not as committed to <laughs> Our deadlines. So the, I'm curious about if diving that, in. That's a really yes. good point because that's the the one part that is hard, challenging for us is that we're uh, how do you keep your uh, consultants accountable? So if they miss a deadline, they're not the one that has to face the owner. We're the ones. You ca you came to the right place. We have all those our resources and tools at the end of the session. Nice. So stick around. <laughs> okay. Cool. Steve. Good morning. Um, I know I've uh, talked with uh, Aya and Mike a few times uh, about uh, potentially or likely uh, moving to them as uh, outsourcing potential. But to get uh, what I'm looking for in, in this session, um, I had a thought that consultant engineers are always asked to you know, send us drawings on a specific day and then ownership, regardless of what it is, be it healthcare, multifamily, et cetera, uh, have this amazing expectation that we're going to send it into uh, authority having jurisdiction the following day. Um, and, you know, invariably, a structural engineer will add a deep beam that pokes through the ceiling or a uh, plumbing engineer puts a floor drain in a stupid spot. And so uh, knowing that, you know, we're moving to a worldwide economy with revolving uh, working hours. Is there some sort of option where we can send to somebody of like, hey, check the drawings uh, from these engineers looking for whatever show-stopping idiocy items might appear? Okay. Thanks, Steve. We'll address all those later. <laughs> So I don't have any particular question. I was actually looking for sort of a presentation on best practices for managing um, a huge number of projects and how how to both manage the other people involved and manage myself. Okay, we can I help. I'm the bigger <laughs> problem. So where are you from, Michelle, and um, what firm? I'm in California and I work for myself. Okay. All right. So we, we've all introduced ourselves. Maybe we can open it up for a Q&A before we share all our resources. Is there any particular specific questions you all have regarding how to manage your drawing deadlines? I have one question, um, and that is that we recently transitioned to Revit. So we spent the last 20 years doing you know various upgrades through of AutoCAD. And uh, our team's fast. Obviously, that's a uh, you know tried and true format. But uh, Revit is also pretty tried and true at this point. The question is, at what point does it become feasible for you, for our drafters to start doing projects in Revit? 
So there's we're kind of at that stage now where we can pick and choose because we have uh, two Revit drafters and uh, they do beautiful work. It's uh, nice presentations, nice uh, renderings, but uh, not every project has the dollars in there to, embedded in there to cover the time that it costs to actually build a Revit model, especially when it doesn't exist. So that that's one of our uh, questions right now that we're dealing with. Thanks. So I think uh, what Jesse's asking is, when's a good time to pivot from CAD to Revit? Uh, does it make sense? Uh, we have some some um, things we can share with you about converting CAD files to Revit, um, but from a business perspective, um, if the dollars are there in the project for you to to get the model done, um, then that's the right way to go. Uh, we have obviously we have experience doing that. We have a team of Revit drafters who can set up a, mo a model for you and then use that base model going forwards for all of your projects. I, I like that. I like the sound of that. It sounds good. So that's something that we've we've had we've done for other clients in the past where they. They basically, you know, give us a project to build a model for them, They're, and all their families are based off of that. So you can then do use that same model for future projects, which is much more cost effective. Um, and Revit, being Revit, you can actually do it in the cloud. Um, BIM Collaborator, I think it's called now. Yes, uh, uh, BIM Collaboration yeah. Pro. And yeah. so that allows you to then um, share. Uh, work real time amongst your team because you're doing all of it in one location in the cloud. Are you new to Revit, Jesse? How old is, I mean, wh when did you start using Revit? Uh, I don't use Revit, but uh, our drafters, uh, so we have uh, gotten to the point where we need to jump on the bandwagon. So we just purchased it this year, I think, or maybe just at the end of last year. And so we've been using it for about three or four months, and uh, our our the Revit drafters that we have are really uh, they're proficient at it. They actually even prefer it. And then uh, new candidates that we want to hire, we want to make sure that they have that ability as well. Yeah, I mean, most of our clients are Revit clients now, so we have a huge Revit team. But we'll share some resources on getting your team up to speed as well on Revit. That sounds great. Look forward to it. Anyone else? I actually do have a question. I okay. have used AutoCAD architecture, which is not being moved forward by Autodesk at all. Um, very frustrating. When Revit first came out, I did try Revit and hated it with a passion. I I am interested in um, if there are resources available for people who use architecture, or if it's really time for me to throw in the towel and move to something else. And if I was going to move to something else, is Revit really the only option? So my question for you, Michelle, is do you have a huge pipeline of work? If you do, then I think going to Revit is the way to go. Because right now, I mean, even CAD is going to disappear in the next five years, I think. I don't know. Um, so it depends on your project pipeline. But if you want to find good quality staff and drafters, AutoCAD, Revit, and ArchiCAD is really the way to go. So I am at the end of my career. So and But I will probably still work for another 10 years. I will not have staff again. I am past that. So that's definitely something to consider. But I do interact with my consultants, in particular my engineers, a lot. They are completely opposed to Revit. Um, they just do not want to touch it. That doesn't matter because I can. I know from my past experience with Revit that I can export those files to them. They don't use AutoCAD architecture either, so I'm already flattening and exporting. It's, it's fine. Um, and most of my projects are likely to be residential or very small commercial retail hospitality kinds of things. At this point, I've kind of moved away from my larger projects. I think do what's comfortable if for you is my suggestion because I am a CAD person. I've been doing CAD for like 20 years and 
I don't do Revit anymore, but I have an entire Revit team. And, you know, I mean, if you have one or two consultants, you can hire to help you, you know, students who can draft for you there in California, wherever. I think it's worth it because learning at, I mean, at my age, it's kind of frustrating, especially because I'm running a business as well. Like my my time is well spent, like doing the things that I do as a as a business owner, not really learning Revit right now. Dale, I have a question: Is yes, architect yes. every medium between the two, AutoCAD and Revit? Um, yes, uh, more or less, they are. They have like the same as uh, uh interface, but ArchiCAD uh, tends to be more user friendly compared to Revit because. Revit is more feature rich, so it's a bit complicated compared to the ArchiCAD software. But mm. more or less, they have the same uh, uh, use as um, Revit ArchiCAD. So it's it builds the model as well, and then you just make the sections. It makes two D drawings as well, just like Revit. I hear Revit. I mean, ArchiCAD is easier to learn than Revit. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm I'm Hi, very, um, oh, sorry. very CAD proficient and <laughs> and 3D proficient in architecture. So I just hated Revit. Um, partially because the keyboard shortcuts were not the same. And, um, yeah. you know, it, owned by the same company and just everything seemed like it was tedious to do in Revit to me. It's tedious to do in architecture as well. Um and I have had very poor experiences with outsourcing in general. I have tried using students. I've tried using very um, supposedly experienced architects and designers, and they could not produce the documents I expected. So. Yeah, that's the a lot. That's a huge problem all over right now, especially. Hi, Mandy. Do you want to say hi real quick? Or just, it's a small group. You just want to introduce yourself, where you're from, and what you expect to hear from us. Okay. Uh, any other questions while we're waiting? Again, it's very casual. We can just, you know, chit chat, talk about anything business related, project related, drawings, drafting, whatever. Right, Mike? <laughs> right. I don't know, Mandy. I don't know if you realize you're on mute in case you were speaking. Um, we couldn't hear you, but yeah, it may be a good time just for us to jump into our best practices and share the, the kind of resources, what we do in order to manage all of our drafting um, projects. Yes. Kayla, uh, do you want to get into it? Yes. Uh, hold on. Let me share my screen. So but before, before Gail starts, so, so we do a huge volume of drafting for different architects and this is our expertise so we, we, we're going to share with you all our tools and how we manage like drafting for 20 to 30 firms with a team so you can please take notes take screenshots if you wish um there's a lot uh, in in gail's presentation in terms of the software that we use a lot of them are actually um, free or or very with very minimum cost so go ahead gail Hi, everyone. So let me share my screen. Okay. So for us to be organized, we made up a process. Uh, we break it down into four parts. Uh, the proposal of the project, the drafting, uh, quality assurance, and post-submission or after drafting support. Because even though we've submitted the work, I'm especially for new clients with us, when we're still getting to know their standards, I'm sure there's still a lot of markups that the client would like uh, to reach their level of output expectations. So we have a post submission where they can send their markups and we correct them or we rectify them. So these are our four major processes in a project. So in my next screen, we actually use a client portal. This is where we do all the communications and where all clients send in their requests. It's much easier compared uh, when you do it in email because sometimes in email, uh, there's a lot of threads that get mixed up with other emails. So here, uh, the client sends in their request and each project will be organized. Uh, it's like uh, each project has their own projects folder. So when you click on a specific project, 
for this uh, example, you can see the project name, the descriptions, their deadline, all the instructions that the client gave. And you can also see who, who are working on it, its status, and who in your organization are able to receive notifications as, on this as well. And here below in the discussions field, this is where we do uh, mostly our communications with the client. So tracking everything, any historical data within this project, it's so easier to track. You'll also get email notifications on this, so you don't need to log in to the portal every day. So it makes it easier as well. So when we start... Um, can I add to, yeah. Okay, yeah. So can I add to that too? This is also in response to one of your questions about how to manage people from all over the country. If you have consultants everywhere, having a portal where if you're working with a, an Indian um, company or a Chinese company and you need drawings fast and they're asleep, the portal is where everyone from all, or it, it's transparent. Anyone from your organization can check the drawings whenever you have deadlines. So this is part of our digital headquarters and it has worked for us because, you know, the traditional emailing the staff back in China or in the Philippines and they're asleep doesn't work anymore. <laughs> Go ahead, Gail. Oh, and when, when we first start off with the client and they send us projects, when we look over it or start working on it, for sure there are things that we don't understand and we would, there would be a lot of questions at the beginning. So we have this template on how we send clients or questions. Like instead of just a standard list, this is actually how we send out um, requests for information lists or questions to client. So we itemize all of them we place the location example of in a floor plan or elevation, we specify which location. So it's a ground floor restroom. What are uh, the issues like maybe like material tags or like the fixtures and then our questions written in uh, written. And then here the images. So you don't have to go through um, a lot of the PDF files or, or a lot of your drawings to see what we're trying to ask. So here you can see everything laid out and you can mark up directly on the PDF as well to answer those questions. So it's easier, especially there are some clients that are busy and can't hop on a call, but you know, in their free time, they can just open up their PDF and mark it up here. Um, for our workflow, we have the proposal and the drafting. So in the proposal stage, uh, we have this uh, tool. It's, a, it's actually a free tool if you use it personally. But for us with a company, we're up to like a couple of users. Uh, it's already paid. So this is uh, monday.com, one of our online tools that we use. So we have a lot of pages here where the workflow process is break down. So in the proposal stage, it is uh, projects in the pipeline. So these are the possible projects that are coming into the company. So we would know uh, and expect like how many projects would come in for CAD and how many projects would uh, come into Revit and we can manage our resources within the company. So from that, um, the status is pending or if we're still estimating, if we're waiting on their files and once they approve it, we go to the other page of monday.com, which is our active projects and pending projects or on hold projects. Um, the blurred out text are the project names and the client names. Uh, I blurred it out to keep it confidential. So here under each project, we've also streamlined the process because we, we really expect quality work. And to do that, we have to rigorously check our output. So we have a project analysis. We take maybe a day to look all over the files meticulously look over it. We, if we see any discrepancies, like if you give us like sketch of files or anything that the client gives us, we'll make a list, the RFI list that I've showed all of you. And then we send it to the client and every day where we're going to have like an expected output that the team lead would review. And from there, we can discuss with the teams if there are additional questions or information that we need to the client. And before sending it out, the final submission is we do a self-QA and then a secondary one 
for the team leads QA. And if it doesn't pass, it goes back to drafting and rectified and the process goes back all over again. The QA process is very important, quality assurance, and a lot of architects don't really have the time to do QA because we're so busy drafting. And my suggestion is really to avoid mistakes. If you can spend like 10 minutes just to review the work, if you don't have somebody dedicated to just quality control, because sometimes we're, when we're drafting, we can just get lost in the drafting and we miss something. So maybe taking a step back, like a five minute break, and then just spending like 10 minutes to do your own QA, that will really help, you know, prevent any disasters in, when you send the drawings out to your contractors. Um, so Keisha, I hope this, this uh, helps with um, managing contractors, uh, engineers, people remote from you. This, this is a good way to manage it. The other thing I want to point out is all of these categories, workflow categories, active projects, spending projects, these are completely customizable. You create the workflow you want. That's great. And there, and then there are a lot of, of software out there, like Monograph has a huge, you know, I mean, they're really good for big companies. But since our project is just drawing delivery, so we actually picked like three or four tools that worked for our company. And that became our digital headquarters. And you don't need to spend a lot. You can just pick. We we yeah, tried different things. Right now, uh, we were in between when we we're um, transitioning for from Archie Office, BQE. We we um, were looking at Monday and all these other ones, but uh, we ended up going with Core. Um, yeah. Because we needed to integrate because we've been using QuickBooks Desktop for ten years. We've been in business almost twenty. So yeah, we are using Core, and I really like. How I've heard how great Monday is, but then I also heard some things that it it doesn't do for the architectural project management side for us. But I I yeah. like this because I haven't seen this option in Core where it can show you the different thing, the different projects on hold to active projects. I really like that. Oh, and one thing I like also about Monday is it has. Uh, in software automations. So for example, when you put the stat status in, let's say delivered, it'll prompt a message to the billing person that we can build this, we can build this project since it's delivered already. Or when when you place a sign to, it'll send out a notice to the person that you're assigning it to that you've been assigned to this project. So you can create conditions and automations as well to give certain persons notifications. So for example, there is certain tasks that you've given your um, engineers here. Uh, it'll send statuses that this is like the delivery, you've updated this and that. It depends on what settings you've created as well. So for our uh, project management tool, this is what we use on uh, monday.com. We also have a time tra uh, chime management tool. Uh, this is a free tool that we use also. Uh, it's Clockify. This is where we track all the project hours, especially when there are clients that wants to know um, how many hours we've spent working on a certain project. Uh, this is it. This is an example because in Clockify, you can actually export all the data you have there. So this is an example of an exported uh, data of a detailed report for one week. So all the redacted things are confidential. But here below, you can see here um, the project uh owner and then the project title as well. So you can see the specific descriptions like updating walls and elevation, how many hours it took us to work on that and the certain drafter that's uh, working on the tasks as well. So here there's a detailed list of all the tasks that we've done for this specific project. The good thing about Clockify is if you're running a firm with multiple, with so many employees and so many projects, having like timesheets is really a pain, like monitoring your timesheets. Clockify, you actually put it in your computer and then you just hit go and then tell them what you're working on and then stop and then go and stop. And at the end of the week, you'll generate a report and then you can easily send it to your clients for billing. So it really streamlines that uh, part of the process so you can get paid faster, <laughs> I hope. <laughs> so you can do it like weekly, monthly. You can choose the dates when, where it generates the report. It can go back to the last two years. You can filter it by projects, by drafters who did it. 
So there's a lot of options in Clockify and it's so user friendly as well. It's completely free. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Yeah. Well, they have they have paid versions, but for what we're just doing drafting hours, so it's not. Yes. We we just have the free. So for all our uh, softwares and tools, that's what we use in the company. Aya, is there something you want to share? Wait, there's two new messages at the bottom. Any questions before I proceed to my part of our free resources? So we act, we have a lot of free resources that we can share with you based on you know our clients' needs. Um, Mike and I did a talk in Section Cut called How to Deliver Projects on Time and on Budget Without Sacrificing Quality. This is on YouTube. It's very detailed Q and A. It's it's like a like a whole hour with a lot of questions. So I think if you want to know more, just if you have spare time while you're driving or listening to our Q&A, we, we really deep dive into particular projects like what do you do when you have a, a rollout of 4,000 stores or 100 stores or what do you do when you're doing a hotel and there's five or six people doing work all over the country. So, you know, this is a really great resource and it's online. It's on YouTube. We also have blogs, but I wanted to share this blog specifically for project drawing delivery. Um, this blog you can find on our website, Quality Project Delivery. Again, we break it down. It's like a 20-page blog, I think. So I won't go into detail. Feel free to check it out because we really create a lot of content for, for our, our customers and clients. This is a project workflow we do for our uh, on onboarding our clients. And we're very particular about our workflow because we want to make sure we manage expectations with our clients. So we're not missing any de deadlines. We, we, we have, we always, we book them down in four stages. So this is our process workflow that we, we share with our clients and you can copy this too. I shared this in, in, um, in section cut, but basically we have our client onboarding and who are the key team members that are on this project phase. Before we go move on to the second phase, there's always a client approval. This way we're managing our clients' expectations or or you can too. Like for instance, you have a deadline tomorrow, but your client hasn't responded in like three weeks. So, you know, it's not like you, it's your fault, right? So when you onboard your clients, make sure that their client response times that they'll respond to you so that you can deliver for them. So we're very, um, you know, we're very process oriented. So again, I'm gonna share all this. This is um, our our client onboarding at the end of the project stage four. We have a delivery project, delivery project close closure and archiving, and you can use this as well in your 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 team because archiving is really important to to make sure your all the data that you're producing and your firm you can reuse in the future for other details. So um, I can give this as a free resource um, later on. Um, another blog that I, we, we made was prevent mistakes during the DD and CD phase using communication protocols. Um, this is really important when you're talking to clients because sometimes clients will, um, you know, talk to other people who are not involved. For instance, if I'm the designer in my team, but then my husband, for instance, is the accounting person who's, he's an ar architect, but in billing, you need to make sure there's a person you talk to for design related issues or a person the client talks to for, for billing related issues in terms of like um, client communications protocol. So everything is in order and it's transparent. So this is a great blog to check out also. And we just launched our MGS drafting YouTube channel. And this actually to answer your questions for people who want to um, learn Revit fast, we're launching a 10 week course called um, Revit Crash Course for Architects. So we're releasing one video per week starting next week. And it's actually the training I used for my team during COVID. When, when times were slow during COVID, I hired um, a, a Revit instructor to record those 10 videos. So it's really Revit architecture for our, for architects who worked in CAD to Revit. Um, so we have a lot of, we will be putting out Revit source um, training. We also have ARCHICAD training and um, a lot of Revit how-tos, like those short videos. So please check it out. And if you wanna subscribe, 
you please do because you'll get notified with the classes. It's the Revit course, the 10 week course is very popular. So once it's released, we'll let you know. Um, this is our website, but in our website, you'll see a lot of blogs and what's happening. I tend to go to a lot of conferences all over the country. So I just recently went to an architecture model making conference or a hospitality conference. So I know what's going on in the industry. So if you don't have the time to go to the hospitality conference or other architecture conferences, I write about it a lot because I'm always traveling. Again, we also have drafting blogs about Revit, Archicad. It's very detailed. Um, we also have professional growth growth blogs. A lot of the things I'm sharing today, we break it down, like how how we do our QA process, how to prevent mistakes, things like that. So we create a lot of content for you guys so you can check it out at your convenience. So that's all for now. I just wanted to um, let me know if you have any comments or questions about the the our topic. And if you if you want the all these tools, we're happy to email them to you. So yeah, thank you so I'll much. We first. Some thank time. you. Thank you for sharing that. I think the um, the tools that you have are great. And I, I like that you're sharing the process. That's very helpful to to share that. So you can kind of get an idea. I am all of it. I'm just absorbing. But I, the most thing that I liked at the very end is that um, that that Revit um, quick uh, ten week course because there's a few people that I know that would um, benefit that from right away. Right away. And so if you could email Jess and I that um, that and then also your um, outsourcing. Um, I know you do architecture but do you guys do any engineering as well yes we do MEP and structural oh great wonderful we could definitely use that <laughs> yeah perfect so let's keep in touch yeah so we're excited about this resource because um this I hired this lady who's a Revit instructor and I asked her years ago you know if I could record it and maybe when I have my YouTube channel in a few years if I can share it for free and mm -hmm. she said, okay. I'm like, why not? <laughs> so it's an hour long each. Perfect. Yeah, I'll check out the YouTube. Yeah. I think it will be released next week, one per week. Yeah. Okay. Thanks. But now we have some bite sizes. Yeah. Steve, did we answer your question? Uh, n Not exactly, but we can talk more later. Okay. Uh, I think you, you mentioned wanting someone to be able to, to send something overnight, get it done. When you come back in the morning is kind of basically yeah as a coordination review uh because that part of a project is always so pinched from a client right gail or aya can you speak to that so review? Co coordination with structural and mep right correct yeah like looking all the for consultants sudden things yeah. that uh was not expected See, unfortunately like as architects and I, when i was working in the profession i can't really do it I can't really push those structural engineers or MEP because they have their own timelines as well, right? So uh, what do I did when I was working in a big firm in New York City and I had to deal with that is I already knew the kind of structural engineer that I worked with and I knew their process. So even before onboarding your structural engineer and MEP, and this is what we do in MGS. What is your response time? Like what, you know, in our company, we have a response time of like within the working hours of an hour to three hour response time, or it's not acceptable, you know, but again, that's me internally. But I think when you work with consultants and when you onboard, maybe ask them what is the reasonable response time for, for um, when we have rush deadlines, do you have, do you have a, uh, you know, like a rush fee if if I need to get things done in two hours. Like, and everyone is so busy nowadays and it's really hard even just to get on a phone with a person. So I think I'm um, getting to know your consultants in advance. <laughs> I don't know. Did, did that help, Steve? Uh, no, that's, that wasn't the question that I had, but that's all right. We'll talk more later. Yeah. I think I can relate to what Steve is saying. And I, I believe I understand what you're saying is that the accountability, right? So we have the accountability to our clients. H how do we set up that accountability for our 
our consultants or engineers to say, okay, we give we gave it this deadline. Here's this date. They they send it back to us, and I believe Steve was saying like, okay, then that engineer or that consultant needs to know that we still need to edit the drawings to submit and allow that time. So it's just, um, let's say those drawings come back with errors that just happened last week where the engineers had errors on them. Then we have to correct them and send them back to the engineer and then go back and forth. So it's just like, um, I don't know if anybody else has thought about putting it within the proposal, like an accountability clause, like how much time it takes the architect to clean up drawings or they submit like somebody in their firm might have just got sick for two weeks or go on vacation. And then that causes a delay in, in our submittal. That's true. Yeah. And that, that's, that's yeah, a good my, idea. My issue is actually consultants tend to deliver on the day that they say they're going to, but then they'll have not reached out and there's a dropped beam where we don't have a soffit or they added a floor drain and we didn't slope the floor. Um, trying to find things like that at the last minute is really difficult. And so having the ability for someone to provide like over, an overnight look, so there's eight hours of review time, that would be super helpful. Yeah. So one of our clients, sorry, Kish, one of our clients hired our company. It was a huge, um, it was a huge project in Brooklyn. Uh, a synagogue and they hired our company just to do QA and QC for coordination if their team missed anything. It's one of the biggest synagogues. I think it's one whole block in Brooklyn and all we did was check the coordination between structural and architectural. So like exactly what you're saying, the beams, are there any beams there? Did we miss a soft fit? And that was our project for three months. Just We're like the police. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. I think for us, the the key for us is in is is that communication from texting teams. We we actually have a team channel with our uh, consultants and ones that we like that we use the most. And so yeah. that so like if we text them or call them or just what whatever way we get to meet, then they know that we need they they need to be available right away. And the more that that communication is successful, the more projects they get with us. So that's. Yeah. And, and having a digital headquarters like us, we have Slack for our clients internally, too. We have different teams. So I think it really helps, especially with people working remote. But some people don't use that, even though we ask them to, <laughs> you know, like people just want to get on the phone a lot, especially like contractors, they they prefer to get on the phone. Anything okay, else? Thank you. You're welcome. Any other kind of content you want us to produce? Because we're, you know, we're happy to create any articles or videos. I I saw that you had 3D animation. Yes. How do you do that when you're located far away? If we're in California, um, it, it's just drafting, like 3D animation. So you send us some of the your. You, we 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 do modeling and we we create animations for that. Do you need like drone so, shots and stuff like that? No, though? no, not drone shots. We we model them in in oh, you know our, our software and then we can do that. We do that for a lot of our um re not retail but real estate clients mm -hmm. when they need to do um you know a walkthrough of their huge projects for pre pre-selling things like that. We don't do drone, but if you have any drone um, shots, we can create a whole project with your with your existing files. So another service we provide is for real realtors. We provide walkthroughs for like as built companies. So you know if their clients can see what the space looks like, we we do we have a software that does that. What is it, Gail? Called the Pano the VR. Pano Pano VR tour. Yes. Yeah. So we have so we like three your... tours. Yeah, those are great for hospitals that we're doing that are just did like a clinic makeover or ED department. We just hired a company that did that for our client MLK down here in Los Angeles. And, and it's a beautiful walkthrough and a 3D animation. So the, we're thinking yeah. of, that would be great for some of our other facilities. And this is all used for pre-sales and kind of like marketing expense for other right. big companies. Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you for your time today. I'm going to have to sign off, but I appreciate meeting you guys.
Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank Anyone you. else have questions? Thank you for the time. Thank you for setting us Thanks, up. Thanks, Steve. Have a good Thanks, day. Thanks, Steve. You too. Bye. Feel free to reach out to us if you need production drafting at mgsglobalgroup.com. Don't forget to subscribe.